I just read an article about Hyundai calling Tesla electric cars toys only a few years ago. So the question is, Hyundai has spent hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, investing into what they claimed was the future at the time, hydrogen vehicles. The question is, how has that worked out for them? Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. Great to see you here on the channel. If you're new, make sure you check out the videos we've made over the last six months. There's a lot of them. Thank you to those of you who have jumped on our PayPal account and joined the channel. We really appreciate your support. I'll put a link in the description below to how you can become a Patreon too. Now, the thing is, this is not just about Hyundai, but, 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 I mean, Toyota, they're still investing in hydrogen. They're crazy. Obviously, BMW is still a bit on the fence about it, but ultimately, really, the one big player still in hydrogen, the one who is investing the most and is completely unwilling to accept sunk cost and therefore sunk cost bias is definitely affecting their decisions right now is Hyundai. Now, Stephen Loveday reports for Inside EVs that for a time, there was quite a debate about whether electric cars would make it into the mainstream. And many automakers also banked on hydrogen as the automotive alternative fuel of the future. And frankly, I'm shocked because even if you just look at Tony Sieber's video from back in 2013, I mean, that was eight, nearly nine years ago that he made that video and all the maths in that video that he used very, very clearly and easily would show even a five-year-old child that hydrogen cars, cars just do not make sense. And I can't understand why none of these automakers just thought, yeah, yeah, well, well okay, let's just watch Tony Sieber's video. I mean, he wasn't the only one. He wasn't the only one saying this does not make sense. He wasn't the only one presenting the numbers on why it doesn't make sense. But frankly, it's shocking to me that none of their engineers said, um, you know what, um, boss, boss, um, boss, this just doesn't make sense. It's going to cost three times more for someone to buy one of these and they're one third as efficient. It doesn't add up. None of them said this for any of these automakers, or at least if they did, they were silenced. Now, several brands touted future hydrogen fossil fuel cars as having the edge over battery electric vehicles. Now, there's many people who mock Elon Musk. Many of them do. It's it's every day of the week now. It's become a, a theme now to mock Elon Musk. I don't know why. I don't understand it. But it's become a thing for people to derive, to hate, to mock, to make fun of, Elon Musk. But the thing is, he bet on the right technology now, nearly 15, what, about 15 years ago now. And he got it right. And yet, all these geniuses, all these highly paid CEOs and engineers, people who are getting paid massive amounts of money to make the right decisions for Legacy Auto, where way more money was at stake than what there was for Tesla, they all got it wrong. So maybe we should be mocking them instead of mocking Tesla, doesn't really add up. Maybe we should be mocking Toyota and Hyundai and BMW. And even Mercedes got in on the act there for a while. And what about Honda? They did the same thing. Why is it we're mocking Tesla and Elon Musk when they weren't the ones that lost billions on a fool's errand that never made sense in the first place? Now, as Stephen Loveday says, even when it was proven time and time again that hydrogen fuel cell vehicles were much less efficient than electric cars, much less is the understatement of the decade, and that the tech was too expensive, the infrastructure was never really coming, etc. Several automakers still held strong. Now, really, one of these points alone would be enough to say, yeah, they're not going to work. But if you combine all of these points together, I just can't, my brain, my brain, I'm just, I can't fathom it. Please, somebody help me here. How did this happen? How on earth did this happen? I mean, think about it. Hydrogen fuel vehicles are much less efficient than electric cars. At the time, there was no such thing as green hydrogen. There may never be. At least it's going to take a long time to get there. Now, technology was too expensive. It still is 20 years later. Infrastructure was never really coming. It still isn't 20 years later. I mean, hydrogen fuel stations, just setting them up, the cost is astronomical. 
and then piping all the hydrogen fuel to the stations, the amount of infrastructure needed in comparison to what you need for electric, it's staggeringly, it's, it's just an orders of magnitude greater expense. I can't understand it. I really don't. Now, that said today, Hyundai does appear to be one of the few hardcore advocates left in the fuel cell vehicle camp. Now, recently, Tesla Rati reminded us that at a Hyundai official called Tesla's Electric Cars Toys only a few years ago. Now, the employee said Hyundai doesn't make a toy like Tesla, and battery-powered cars wouldn't be able to drive over 150 kilometers on a single charge. Isn't it ironic that now you can buy a Hyundai car that does more than 150 kilometers? Well, if you're very lucky, that is, and you can get one of the cars that they make. They don't make many. Now, when a company has touted a specific technology for some time and made such public comments, not to mention investing a huge amount of money, it's expected to follow through. Per Teslarati, former Hanwha Investment and Securities Co-Analyst Ryu Yeonhua explained that Hyundai has put too much time and money into hydrogen fuel cell technology to call it quits now. Now, it's not really 100% correct. It is true that that's what's happened, sunk cost bias. But it's not just Hyundai here. It's also the South Korean government who are pushing this to the death. If Hyundai just said to the South Korean government, yeah, no, that wasn't a good idea. We're going to move on now. The South Korean government would probably say, okay, no more incentives for you, cut off. Because basically they have invested so much into it as well that it would look like massive egg on the face of the government. So this is a big part of the problem now for Hyundai. They are stuck here, basically sucking on the teat of the government, which every automaker is, that's the truth. But the thing is, that teat will probably disappear because of you know how it is in Asia, shame, you can't be shamed. And obviously if Hyundai were to say to the government, no, that was stupid, we're not gonna to continue to waste hundreds of millions of dollars on something that's clearly not going to work, then the government would have shame on its face and would look bad and would therefore probably do something pretty drastic in response. Now, while cars like the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y dominate the electric vehicle segment and fully electric rivals are finding growing success, hydrogen simply has not caught on anywhere except to a very small degree in South Korea. If you look at Hyundai's vehicle sales, Pretty much all of them are only in South Korea, about 96%. Now, Hyundai sells the Nexo and Toyota technically sells the Mirai, but these fuel cell cars are only available in very, very small numbers in limited markets. Aside from a handful of exceptions, California is the only US state with any hydrogen fueling infrastructure as well as one of the only areas in North America with hydrogen fueling stations. Now, the same is the case in Australia, despite our idiotic government deciding hydrogen is a great idea and spending, I think they spent $140,000 per vehicle and they get to keep them for three years. $140,000 per vehicle. <laughs> they can only refuel them at one place, right? That commercial users, that residential users can't use. So in other words, the government bought all these cars they paid $130,000 for each of them. Then they get to, to use them for three years and they have nowhere to fill them up. That's the Australian government for you. Anyway, while cars, according to Bloomberg, a 38-year-old sales manager in South Korea, Song Yong Jin, bought a Nexo in March 2020. He ran into problems almost immediately. While South Korea is having more success with fuel cell vehicles than any other market, because they're pushing them pretty hard. The Nexo owner said he still had to drive about 40 miles every week just to refuel the vehicle. Maintenance costs proved quite high as well. Now he wants to sell the car, but its value has plummeted in the used car market and he's basically stuck with something that nobody really wants. Now Stephen says, needless to say, Song Yung Jin plans to replace the Nexo with a battery electric car. This is what he said. I like the hydrogen car itself. It's quiet and charging takes only five minutes, although you do have to wait, right, 15 minutes between each charge. So if someone's behind you, they've got to wait 15 minutes before they can use it anyway. But refueling stations are lacking and the maintenance costs for parts such as hydrogen tanks are 
huge, which is probably why they're so cheap in the used car market. Next time, I'll buy electric. As Tesorati points out, Hyundai will continue to pursue hydrogen. However, it's also making it clear that it has what it takes to be a leader in the electric car space. For reference, Hyundai sold 6,400 Nexo fuel cell vehicles in South Korea from January to September of 2021. That's 6,000 people I legitimately, honestly feel sorry for. It exported about 875 during the same period. Meanwhile, during that period, the automaker sold 87,000 battery powered cars. Now, surprisingly, Hyundai still claims that by 2030, they'll be selling hydrogen powered vehicles. Do you believe them? I'm not sure I do. Thanks for watching the channel. I'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.